force feedback is finally making a comeback into the world of flight sims with Verpal, Winwing, Moza and independent made FF Beast and VP Force designs. With all this I wanted to talk about what force feedback in DCS is in its purest form without the complications of third party software to give you a baseline understanding and why you should care at all. Roll back time to the late 90s, early 2000s and the joystick was the way to play PC games. Force feedback was taking it to the next level, and widely supported in games. From simple shaking effects matching the on-screen action, to simulating g-forces on your pod racer with the boost even pulling your stick backwards and the brakes pulling it forwards, forcing you to brace against it. These effects added immersion and excitement to your game, even simple buffeting footfalls as you stomp left and right, or the ripple feeling of missiles leaving their pods. They connected you physically, and this is where it truly got game changing, not just fun but letting you feel the road or physically simulating the forces felt in a real aircraft, providing you useful direct feedback. And I happen to have a couple surviving examples of these force feedback joysticks. So let's have a look at some examples in DCS. Alright so we have our Spitfire here and if I move my stick around, the controls stay where I leave them. The stick is completely limp with nothing much going on, there are no forces being applied, no centering. So what happens when we start the engine up? Alright, so we now got the engine running without the runway now. It's pretty much the same, the stick is plenty limp, but if I find the balance point, the elevators will tip downwards now, as the air rushing over them moves them about. However, what happens as we turn the engine up is I'm going to leave the stick all the way aft, and we're going to turn the engine up and see what happens. And there you go, the engine and the air from the propeller has pushed the joystick forwards and into a centre position. And of course this continues to act on the aircraft as we fly. Let's not stall it out, there's a good example of Buffett though. So the faster the aircraft is going, the tighter the stick gets, the stronger the forces are to centre your joystick. And conversely if we put the aircraft into a stall, the stick will go more or less limp again. So in flight and the joystick is now just a little bit stiffer. The faster you go however, if we put the aircraft into a dive, the stiffer the joystick becomes and this is why you've probably seen in movies where people are grabbing the joystick by two hands to try and pull back on the forces as the air running over the surfaces combats your efforts to move the surface against the wind. Conversely if we put the aircraft up and up into a stall, let's just climb up. 140, 120, 100, 80, 60, and now the stick barely has any force on it, in fact it's staying completely open and then as the SP picks up a bit, the control surfaces are pulled back into line with the airframe. So now you can in effect feel the traction on your control surfaces, how much authority you're going to have. This can also impact the uh, rudder and the tailplane, if you pull out of AOA you might find that it falls out of the airflow and therefore loses traction, and so the forces become lighter. Now the other aspect is if we get ourselves into a good turn, start pulling, 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 and there you go, you can see as we hit the limit and the aircraft starts to tip over, the aircraft and the stick start to shake. So now you can feel how close you are to tipping the aircraft, and with a bit of practice you can get to that onset just before the stall and you can feel the tiniest bit of vibration through the stick and you ease off and you can maintain that turn without the risk of doing this and tipping the aircraft out of control. Now let's look at an example of damage, so you can see the stick is wobbling around all over the shop and that is because well we're missing a bit of our wing. So the aircraft is buffeting and uneven and wiggling around. So let's move on to something a little more modern. So our beloved Phantom. Now Heatblur have put a lot of effort into their force feedback simulation. I can't say the same for all modules, it depends individually on the developer. But uh, let's have a look at one of the integral systems of the stability system. Now with the aircraft set in takeoff trim, if we simply let go of the joystick, it more or less stays put, but if I tip it just a tiny bit too far forward, or a tiny bit too far aft, the stick wants to droop and stay there, it doesn't return to centre. 
but if I chuck it to the right it will come back to centre. Now this is because the tail operates a bobweight system to help stabilise the aircraft in flight and on the ground with no air flowing over the controls the system is quite slack. So let's take off. So much like the Spitfire, the faster we go the harder the controls are to move. And in fact this is simulated by heat blur even without a force feedback joystick. Now you remember the bob weight system, this is still in effect and if I chuck the aircraft around a bit and then let go of the stick you can see the stick is being pulled around by the bouncing of the bob weights. And of course you're going to fight with those forces as you move maneuver the aircraft around. And of course we have the same buffeting effect as the aircraft starts to rattle. And much like our tail, as we really start to pick up the angle of attack, we can see the whole control system is rattling with us, giving us some feedback on what's physically going on in the aircraft. Starting off subtle and building up as you push the aircraft too hard and into a spin. Now another aspect of flying is right now the joystick is in fact pointing forwards, it's not straight, so it should be about here. And that is down to the trim system, and the trim typically moves the joystick with the trim control because the trim offsets your centre position with the control. So if I trim the nose down further, the joystick wants to go forwards with my hand and the trim until the aircraft is in a nose dive. And now as I pull back it wants to go back to that trimmed position, so I'm going to start laying off the trim by trimming up, and I can feel the forces come off my hand, and then settle back in, and of course start pulling back as I go too far with it, so I can feel how much trim is offset. So if I want to hold it in a particular position, and then I simply adjust the trim until I stop feeling a resistance on the joystick. Now of course I can't really visualise that to you, but essentially you set the stick where you want it, you hold the trim, you feel the forces gradually reduce, and then they stop, and then you can set it and let go. Which makes it very simple to trim. You don't have to guess, you're not left there tapping the trim key every time, trying to find that exact point. Similarly, if I trim all the way left or right, the stick will move into that position. Of course this is a bit of an extreme trim, but you get the idea. Now the joystick returns to that new position rather than the centre. Now in a similar fashion to how our force feedback joysticks work, some jets actually impart forces on the pilot's stick itself in a similar fashion. So if I pull some angle of attack, the aircraft will kick in, and there you go. You can see it more clearly on the sim. So as our angle of attack gets too high, the stick wants to return itself back to the centre. And that's the stability control essentially fighting your inputs and trying to prevent you from putting the aircraft into a spin. Because it wants to pull the stick back to the centre each time the forces are exceeded. And there is one more example of the jet moving the joystick for you. So we're going to put our aircraft in the autopilot, and it should try to follow the route for us. You can see there it is moving the stick all on its own, following the commands of the autopilot. So if I deliberately chuck it off to one side, it's going to steer us and move the joystick back toward our intended flight path. and it stabilises out. And this exerts quite a lot of force on you. The aircraft really wants to fight, so the aircraft is putting out a lot of force to centre it. It's trying really hard to do so. So, as it stabilises and finds its own path, we've now got this kind of ghost joystick situation where it is flying itself around. Now as we move on to more modern aircraft, the systems become hydraulically assisted in increasingly complicated ways until the point where the aircraft and the stick are no longer physically connected. Now the A10 Warthog has a manual reversion system, which will give us a nice example of, a of hydraulic boosting versus none. So at the moment the stick is stiff, 
and as the hydraulic pressure drops, there you go, it's gone. Suddenly, it's limp, and we can swing it left to right. It's only got a gentle force pulling it back to the center, whereas the control surfaces are quite heavy, so I can tip it forward fairly easily, but if I want to pull it back, it takes more pressure to do so. So let's look at what's happening with the aircraft right now. So on each aileron, we have a tiny little individual mini aileron to steer it. These are connected to the joystick, and as you can see, they do not present much resistance. On the back of the aircraft, however, we still have the full elevator to move around, and that takes a lot more strength to physically move it around. Hence the greater strength in lifting versus dropping. Now this is also one other factor, which is, you may notice, nothing much really happens when I try and tip the stick down. Because the system simply doesn't facilitate it. So this time we are in flight with the Warthog, and if I turn off the hydraulic system, wait for the pressure to drop. Now the controls are on the manual reversion, and you can see the ailerons are maintaining their position by weather vaning into the wind. So if I give it a good wobble, the control surfaces flap around. And of course, now that we have air rolling over the airframe, we have buffeting from the surfaces wobbling, and we have centering forces from the air pulling our control stick back towards centre, much like you would find in something like the Spitfire. In addition to that, with the hydraulic system once again enabled, the joystick on the Warthog in fact sits a couple degrees forward, because it has more travel aft than it does forward, and so the force feedback joystick shifts itself to represent that difference. And of course, once again, if we trim the stick, it'll move with the joystick. Now we have one more, much more dramatic example of trim, and it is a crucial part of why people struggle to fly them. So we are parked on the ground in our Apache, and again, the stick will return to centre just fine. However, the helicopters in general, they operate a magnetic brake system. So if I release the brake by overriding it, now the stick presents no resistance to my movement. It goes where I want it to, and when I release the brake, it stays where I left it. And of course, we'll return to that new point. Now, this allows you to trim the aircraft for forward flight and not have to continually hold forward pressure. Now, this is often abstracted in games because you don't have a joystick that can do this. And that is where the confusion comes in, because you'll stick your aircraft into full trim forwards and not realise it because the stick is not representing it. And then you try and pull back, and you find you can only reach halfway back by having moved all the way back on your spring joystick. Now I have a video on this in more detail, which you can have a look at, if you're interested in how the systems work. But of course, with force feedback, there is no abstraction, everything works as it should. You put the joystick where you want it, it will stay there, holding that trim position, making level flight very, very simple. Now there's also one other aspect, you might remember, there is in fact a gentleman over there who does some of the heavy lifting operating the systems. Now, his joystick is mechanically linked to my joystick, and will move in sync with me. So, what happens if you take two force feedback joysticks, stick them in together in multi-crew, and start wiggling the stick? Well, nothing happens actually, but if you press and hold the trim button, the joystick will follow you around your motion, and both sticks will move together. And this is a very interesting implication, because it means that in a two-seater aircraft, there's absolutely no reason why with two force feedback joysticks you couldn't have the sticks following each other over the netcode in multiplayer. And this would avoid that awkward moment where you're trying to transition from one player having control over the joystick to the other. In fact, the F4 Phantom already has a blended input system and allows you to control the aircraft simultaneously from both seats. Unfortunately, for the moment, they have not actually implemented the force feedback system to have each joystick follow the other. So it functions the same as it would in any other aircraft without the need to change over control. Now, not all aircraft are made equal. In fact, our friend over there, just in front of us, launched with absolutely no force feedback support. And if you tried to fly with a force feedback joystick, you would instantly break the helicopter or otherwise crash. Now, since release, there have been a few patches, and the force trim system does actually work now, more or less. It's not super simulated because the computer systems that govern it in the aircraft are not correctly modelled just yet. But it does mean at least now we can fly the Chinook with the force feedback, and this brings up a rather unfortunate problem with DCS in general. The force feedback varies a lot from module to module, 
Generally speaking, the heat blur modules have a lot of effort put in to simulate the force feedback features, but some of the third parties, or ED themselves, have varying levels of support. And not only that, but some aircraft have varying levels of support, physically, in the airframe intrinsic to their design. Now, in a modern aircraft, like say, the F-18 Hornet, this is an entirely fly-by-wire, you're a voting participant with the computer to fly the aircraft. And that means that there is very little feedback from the joystick. The joystick wants to centre itself, and that's fine, but it doesn't respond to trim inputs, we can trim the aircraft. But it doesn't do anything to our joystick, as per the actual aircraft. So in DCS by default, there are virtually no effects on this joystick, because the game does not simulate the deployment of weapons, or bombs, or taking hits, and it doesn't even always simulate the impact on buffeting from the aircraft. It tends to avoid the gamified effects quite often sticking to only the physical forces on your joystick that you would expect, and occasionally you'll get the buffeting effects to represent the airframe shaking. Now, this only gets worse if you decide to apply something like, say, the F-16, which doesn't even have a moving joystick, so of course me moving the joystick has no bearing on what actually happens inside the cockpit. Simply because our joystick only moves a degree or so inside the pit. Now this is why you're going to find in the controls these days options to configure how the flight control system works, because it's designed for a joystick that doesn't move, and of course most of our joysticks do, so you need to trim that out and change it, so that the controls respond in appropriate fashion. Now this creates an awkward situation where you are desynchronized from your control stick in your cockpit, and there's no real fixing that without buying a force sensing joystick. Now by default DCS just has you act like a normal joystick, and there are no extra effects applied to the aircraft, so if I start pulling really hard, the joystick's not going to start shaking, it's not going to start buffeting with the aircraft, and it really doesn't matter what I do, it's just going to stay there, only applying centering forces, and that is quite a disappointment, because DCS could do a lot more, but many people will see it perhaps as being gamified, and I think that's where Eagle Dynamics stand, where they don't want to add gamified effects, even if they can be physically represented through the feeling in the joystick. So deploying your guns, for example, or dropping bombs, or touching down, or even the cracks on the concrete runway as you buff it and bounce around on the slabs that make up the taxiway. Now all these effects could be transmitted through your joystick, and in fact you could also have things like the air brakes or turbulence hit the aircraft and move the stick around. Now is this realistic? Not necessarily, because it's not specifically the joystick that vibrates, but a lot of third parties have added these software features in to emulate the effects because DCS doesn't have it, and that is where things get a little weird, because it means every single joystick manufacturer has their own set of software, nothing is unified, and so the software becomes a major sticking point on whether or not you want a particular joystick, because it's no good having a joystick that doesn't have the full range of options to feedback. Because, if I'm honest, in DCS without anything extra, it's quite muted, the things are quite simple. Now, of course, it varies from module to module, the F4 Phantom in particular is very good, but even that does not simulate the release of weapons, or the impact of touching the ground as you land, and so on. These effects could easily be added in, and are added in with various third party software sets. So there you really have it, that is DCS as it stands, without any extra modifications, any extra software, and what it simulates, and why it is quite useful to have force feedback in flight sims. You can feel the road as it were, and it gives you physical feedback on the systems and how they interact with you on the aircraft itself, and in fact some aircraft even have systems like rudder pedal shakers to help give you extra information or force feedback in the real aircraft, that being the Phantom and the Harrier for example. Now these can easily be transmitted to you via your joystick in force feedback with the right setup. So before we move on to more advanced modern joysticks that feature full software suites to emulate and control different features and pretend that you've got feedback by listening to what the telemetry tells the software from DCS. You now have an idea of what you should expect as an absolute baseline for anything in DCS, enforce feedback without the extra effects, which is where things get a bit confusing from joystick to joystick. Now if you'll excuse me, I have some nostalgia to bathe in.